Good evening, everyone, and welcome tonight to our 16th annual essay contest for the City of Ocoee's Human Relations Diversity Board. I'm Dr. Kathleen Crown. I'm your MC for tonight, and I'm thrilled that we have a full house, absolutely wonderful for everyone to be here. Okay, I'm pleased here to recognize the outstanding achievements of our students. I would first like to begin by thanking all of the students, parents, friends, family member, everyone involved, because it takes a village to have our students be really successful. And I'll please a round of applause for all of our students that work so hard. Thank you. We received 367 essays this year. We are bug-eyed. <laughs> we read them and debated and the whole nine yards. Our theme this year was a vision of hope. So each of the students wrote their essays and they should be proud of what they wrote. They, it was tough, tough decisions to pick the winners. It really was. And on a side note, I'll tell you that you'll see in our program that some schools had three winners, some schools had two winners, and one of the schools only had one. And that was based upon how many essays we received from each school. Okay? So that's how we figured it out for every year. Now, next I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our Human Relations Diversity Board members that are here in attendance tonight. First week beside me, we have Nicole Dawkins, who is our Media Past Chairperson. Somewhere in here is Ira Calloway, who is a, also a previous chairperson. Also up front, we have Lori Hart. And sitting in the audience is Marlon Von Zill Juste. Thank you. And I'd also like to give a special thank you to our, we had a guest judge this year, and that was Miss Beth Otts from the, she's the marketing director from Chick-fil-A, and Chick-fil-A has been a really great sponsor and supporter for us with goodie bags and gifts and gift certificates and all that sort of cool stuff. So thank you to uh, Beth and to Chick-fil-A. And I'd like to thank the Ocoee City Commission for allocating funds to make this essay contest possible. And tonight we have from District 1, Larry Brinson. <laughs> from District 2, we have Rosemary Wilson. From District 3, we have Richard Firstner. There you are. I did not see District 4 Commissioner Oliver, but we also in attendance have our super duper mayor, Rusty Johnson. <laughs> and also in attendance, last but not least, we've got Melissa Bird, who's here from our OCPS school board. All right, now before we get started with everything else, if you would like to find out more about the Human Relations Diversity Board and all the cool things that we do all year long and every year, uh, you can go to onacoe.org or you can see me or one of the people here tonight and talk to us about it. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to start with third place winners, then we're going to go to second place winners, then we're going to go first place winners, then we're going to go to the grand prize winner. Okay. So your best bet is going to be to come up, to grab your goodies. Smile, take a picture, back you go. And at the end, we'll have everybody get together for lots of pictures, and that's really fun. Okay, so first, we're gonna start with, from Citrus Elementary, third place is Julia Mavis. Oops, okay, she unfortunately is not here, but congratulations. Thank you. From Hope Charter, our third place winner is Adeline Adams. Hmm. Not off to a roaring start. Oh dear. <laughs> It'll get better. I saw lots of fifth graders. <laughs> 
Our third place winner from Renaissance Charter at Crown Point is Alyssa Ammon. Yay! There, excellent. And our third place winner from Thornbrook Elementary is Michaela Celestin. So congratulations to all our third place winners and let's move on to our second place winners. From Citrus Elementary, second place is Isabella Rivera. Second place from Hope Charter Elementary is Addison Ritter. Nope. Second place from Maxie Elementary is Nevea Washam. Second place from McCoy Elementary is Vita Anderson. <laughs> Second place from Prairie Lake Elementary is Damon Smith. Second place from Renaissance Charter is Cassandra Carrington. <laughs> Second place from Spring Lake Elementary is Jenna Prose. Second place from Thornbrook Elementary is Ella Terrell. And congratulations to all our second place winners. Folks, those of you that are back in the doorway, if you'd like to come stand against the wall, if you want to be able to see better, we've got room over here, if you'd like. We've got one seat right here. It looks like we've got one seat over there. We've got a seat over here. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> And now it's time for the first place winners. First place from Citrus Elementary is Evan Vega. All right, Evan, you're gonna read your essay first and then they're gonna give you all your goodies, okay? Because we wanna hear what made it first place. Surprise! 
Oh, we didn't tell you that ahead of time? <laughs> you ready? It's okay. It's 2020 and people are wondering how America or whatever country they're in is going, is going to change. Some people think about politics and, wait, uh, some people think about politics and voting for president. Other people think about ending world hunger and curing cancer, but most people think about race related topics like segregation and racism. I'll be talking about all those topics and more. Racism went, wait. Oh, I forgot to say is. <laughs> Racism is when people think about, wait, oh, ra <laughs> Racism, when people think about racism, they think about an unfair judgment based on skin tone or religion, but that's not all racism is. Racism is also when people make an unfair assumption about a person with a different skin tone or voice. For example, people associating black people with street gangs or Chinese people being associated with an accent. This is also used for marketing and movies, so I hope this array of racism will cease to exist. Curing world hunger and, and cancer is another topic which is not being taken with much political concern. This is because most people are focused on a certain president, even though world hunger and diseases like cancer are just as important. Lots of people find it frustrating, wait, oh, I can't pronounce it right that the government and other political figures are ignoring any way to take care of these problems. One way they could take care of these situations is to make rich people donate to poor and disease-related programs. So I hope that people politically focus on world hunger and other diseases. In conclusion, I hope the world and many other co countries can set their differences aside and be a team since we have the potential to do amazing things. Nice job, Evan. <laughs> Evan. Our next first place winner from Hope Charter Elementary is Vienna Morgan. In the digital world that we live in now, image means a lot to everyone. Our brains process and make decisions from the moment we first see someone. From that moment on, we've already made a lot of assumptions and grouped them into multiple categories. These are examples of how we judge. We make judgments typically when people look different than ourselves. If they, aren't, if they aren't dressed as nice as you, you can assume they are poor. If they don't have your normal physical appearance, you can assume that, that there's something wrong with them and they aren't capable of the thing, same things you are. We can group them based on income, attitude, intelligence, abilities, and many more sim simply by their appearance. This is not right. My hope for the future is that we can judge people by who they are as a person. The first female assistant coach just made it to the Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers. First of anything is a big deal, but, but my hope is that in the future it won't be a big deal. My hope is that the next minority president, whether it is a male or female, isn't a big deal. I'd rather them being known for being the best candidate for the job. You will find that people that don't look like you may turn out to be some of your best friends. In the past, people have incorrectly judged me in many ways. I've been picked last while selecting teams to play a sport be based on being a smaller girl. I've proved them wrong by my abilities and wouldn't be picked last again. You can't judge a book by its cover. No one should bully you or stare at you based on what you look like. Plus, the world would be pretty boring if we all looked and acted the same. I believe that we are all made in the image of God. We all have equal value. We are all masterpieces. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but of the content of their character. My vision of hope is, is we, that we can accomplish this goal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank 
you, Vienna. Very nice. Our next first place winner from Maxie Elementary is Tamea Baukamp. Okay, Tamea is not going to read her essay tonight because the poor baby's been sick. So we're going to give her a pass. <laughs> it was a good essay, too. I can read you. You want me to read it? Let me read it. It's good stuff. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. King believed all men are created equal, and you should enjoy the same rights and privileges. One of his most poignant lines from his famous I Have a Dream speech was that he hoped his children would be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin from the website. How did Martin Luther King's vision change the world? King inspired my vision to change the world by taking care of pollution. There's a lot of trash harming sea animals like turtles, plastic straws harming the little sea creatures, and trash is bad for the environment. The meaning of a vision of hope is a feeling of wishing for something to happen and having faith or belief that it actually could happen. Wikipedia validates these claims by stating that the introductions of contaminants into the natural environment that cause adverse change. What this means is pollution can take the forms of synthetic matter or energy, such as sound, thermal, light, and I am trying to fix the problem because, for example, in fact, I am so passionate about this topic that I joined the green team in my school. It helps my school community by saving money, and it's helping our school environment by less trash in the landfill. As a member of the green team, I go around everyone's classroom and search for anything that's not recyclable and put it in the garbage. And if it is recyclable, I recycle it. For example, if you recycle a water bottle, you have to take off the wrapper. If it's not a number one or a number two, same thing for the cap. It's important because not going to be recycled, it's not going to be a number one or a number two, and it's going to go into the landfill. I hope the world will become pollution free because I don't want to live in a toxic world. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> On the website, Medline Plus demonstrates that. Air pollution is a mixture of solid particles and gases in the air. As a matter of fact, cars release chemicals, factories from dirt, irritant, and mold spores may be put up as particles. High levels of air pollution can cause an increased <coughs> risk of heart attack, wheezing, coughing, breathing, problems, eye irritation, and more. Lastly, my vision of hope is to lead an example for future generations. Based on my personal experience to change the world is to find ways to stop pollution. According to Simple Ways to Get Rid of Pollution Inside Your Home, it states, switch to natural cleaners or ones with low dosage if you can. In other words, household cleaning agents have a lot of chemicals in them. Those chemicals are toxic and can do harm by causing pollution. Getting rid of them would decrease the amount of pollution we put into the air. To top it all off, simple ways to get rid of pollution inside your home, articulates, while you can cut down on the cigarettes, the residual gas and particles from smoke pose a great health hazard. This proves that cutting down on cigarettes will make it easier for our future generations to live without too much pollution in the air. By doing this, it would be like a favor. In conclusion, there are multiple ways for us to deal with pollution. A vision of hope is a feeling of wishing that something will happen. I hope the world become pollution free because I don't want to live in a poisonous world. And my vision of hope is to lead an example for future generations. At the day, 
Don't be afraid of change. You can change the world by taking action. There is no future without a past. Nice job, Tamaya. Now we're going to go on to a Coe Elementary, and the first place winner is Amaya Lewis. Hi, my name is Amaya Lewis. I am currently a student at a Coe Elementary. My teacher's name is Miss Abreu. Today I have been given the theme of a vision of hope. In my opinion, a vision of hope is a better tomorrow for young people and less discrimination due to the color of one's skin. In addition, there will be less violence in the world. A better tomorrow means to me a better education for young people. In addition, if you had bad days in the past, you will have many good days in the future. If you cried yesterday, you will not cry today. If you had a bad year last year, you will, not, you will have a better year this year. Also, a better education for young, me, young people means there will be better opportunities in the future for young people than there was in the past. In addition, people who were hurt in the past will rise up from what hurt them in the future. Secondly, a, secondly, a vision of hope means to me there will be less discrimination by the color of one's skin. This means to me, this means to me, because, this means to me, because you are black, you cannot, it doesn't mean you have to do anything in particular, and you can't, and you can't do anything because you're white in particular either. No matter what race you are, we are all God's children and we can do anything we put our minds to. Lastly, my vision of hope is no more violence in our school systems. And that one day there will be no more violence in our school systems. I have a vision of hope that in the future, parents will not have to worry about their child's safety while they are at school. Many schools have been hurt and abused while parents are working, such as the Parkland, for example, the shooting at Parkland High School where 14 students and three, adult, and three adults were killed. And at Sandy Hook Elementary School where 20 students and six staff members were killed. These are just a few, these are just a few examples of my vision of hope in the school systems. In conclusion, a vision of hope means to me the future will be, be be better than the past. And I believe that people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And there, and there will stop violence in areas where many children are, including schools. And these are my visions of hope. Nice job, Amaya. From Prairie Lake, Prairie Lake Elementary, our first place winner is Renaya Henderson. A vision of hope means to me what I hope my life will be like in the future. A hope to live in a kind world where people are respectful and responsible with their actions. 
I would like to see people not bullying each other. I hear them say hurtful things to each other. My vision of hope is that kids get along with other, with other kids. Instead of fighting, I would like to see them talk it out and apologize to one another. I would, the world would be like, the world would be a more peaceful place if kids and adults stopped fighting and apologized to one another. Each year I donate some of my toys and clothes to my two homeless kids. I also feed the homeless. There are people in the world who do not have any shelter, food, clothes, or water. They need more people to help them. My hope is to see more people in the, in the community help out so that we would not have as many people sleeping in the streets. My hope for the future is that schools have more security measures in place to keep kids safe. If every school has security cameras, they could look at every angle of the school. The school would be able to see who is coming on campus. The cameras will help them prevent someone dangerous from coming into school, into the school. Schools can, can help kids who are angry by being, and being bullied by letting them talk, their, talk about their feelings to school staff members without being embarrassed. Another way to make school safe, safer in the future is to give students in all schools a student ID tag to allow kids, to allow them to get into the locked doors. If every school had bulletproof windows, the school would be safer. This is my vision of hope for the future. Okay, next we're going to go to our first place winner at Spring Lake Elementary, which is Emma Rogers. Do you ever wonder why Ruby Bridges went to an all-white school, why Rosa Parks kept her seat, why Jackie Robinson broke the racial barrier in Major League Baseball? They, along with many others, did this as for they had a vision of hope for America. First speech to say, various African Americans spoke out for freedom and or equality. For example, Martin Luther King Jr. declared that everyone should have equal rights in his I Have a Dream speech. Also, Sojourner Truth stood up for her for racial inequalities. If I were there for these speeches, for those speeches, I would have probably done something to support them. These people, young or old, spoke out and made a difference. Obviously, just because they are different doesn't mean they can't modify our future. Next slave to save, a handful amount of people were against slavery and tried to end it. Furthermore, Harriet Tubman freed slaves using the trusty Underground Railroad. I think Harriet aided slaves because she knew how life was like to be one. John Brown, one of Harriet's spouses, was opposed to slavery, so he raided people and freed their slaves. If I were there, I would have helped them no matter what the cost was. Both of these people were born into slavery, and both of them, with others, helped put an end to slavery. It's unmistakable that these people were born to make a difference. I've always wondered why African Americans did these things. Now I know. Countless amounts of black people freed slaves and or made speeches. They did this because they had a vision of hope to change America.
next we'll go to the first place winner from Thornbrook Elementary, which is Nathan Cade. My vision of hope. What is hope? For me, hope is the feeling of looking forward to something and expecting what is wanted to turn out for the best. My vision of hope is to put an end to school shootings and police brutality and keeping African American history alive. The chains of slavery are gone, but we are all not yet free. To begin with, I hope there is an end to school shootings. I believe all students and teachers and faculty should be able to go to school and feel safe. We as students should be able to get an education without the worry of gunmen walking through the door. In my opinion, this can be controlled by banning assault weapons, which is military-used guns, raise the age limit to purchase firearms in all states with background checks, and give mental health counseling at schools. In addition, I desire to prevent police brutality. I imagine that all people are treated equally no matter what color their skin is. I imagine that a young black boy like me can ride their back to the gas station and not be targeted. I imagine I seeing a good white cop as a good cop and not being a afraid of him taking my dad's for the way they look. I imagine no more racial injustice in America. Moreover, I am confident that we should keep African American history alive. To save black history, we as Americans should honor it for more than one month. I believe learning about the struggles and successes that African Americans experience will help people learn about the humanity of others. Oftentimes, black history is taught in a limited subject, when in fact, it can be taught in all subjects, such as music, art, science, and math. Music is found all over the world and full, is full of black talent. The importance of different cultures and music gives us a chance to learn, sing, dance, and listen to music from another view. There are also many African Americans who use art to show, their, show the culture through their paintings. STEM is one of my favorite subjects, and I think it would be a fun way to learn about the culture, not only for me, but for all my peers too. In conclusion, I hope my neighborhood and community will change and grow. I hope that everyone will be kind to each other. I hope that all people will be treated equally not, and not just for the color of their skin. I hope we can learn we can learn black history for more than just one month. I read a quote by Khalil Gibran that read, yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. But today we'll live makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. From Westbrook Elementary, our first place winner, Denisha Cartier. A vision of hope means to me that everything, anything is possible once you believe in yourself. The definition of vision is the ability to think about our plan in the future. With wisdom, the definition of hope is the exception of something to happen. These two things tells me with these two things me that with confidence and positive mindset, hard work and plan and limitations, anything can happen. For example, my vision of hope is to be a successful dentist and in order to do so I must be a successful student by doing so. I will have to study hard and pass all my classes. If I have a test coming up, to, my hope is to pass the test with an A. When I get back the test and it's not an A, I know the next time I will have to study harder to get the A and never give up. Once your mind is made up to do something, it is your, in your best interest to follow through. That's the only way your vision of hope will be successful. And I hope the world will be a better place where people can come together as one and e help each other out 
Rather than fighting against each other, yes, we all have our own things going on, and we will want to be successful and do things, do great things. But at the end of it all, if we be united as one, we can make a difference and set examples for others to follow. We can make greater things happen as a community, as one. We can help each other. We can help each other out by looking at looking out for one another, whether it be in our neighborhoods, business, or just around our community. When one is in need of help, interest of hating them or bringing them down, do unto others as we would like them, like them to do unto us. If you do good things, someone else will be good to you. Based on my personal experience, my vision of hope for the future is to have a community center for children and young people all ages to come and learn different things, such as cooking, baking, sewing, playing an instrument, reading, and much more. Also, to have a section for those that need need counseling or just something, someone to talk to. To have a big brother or sister program and even a place where the less unfortunate kids and young people can come and get a meal and some clothes. Have a guest speaker such as doctors, dentists, teachers, pastors, police officers, firemen, chefs come in to talk, teach, and entertain the stu- the children and young people and the officer the offer their service in need. If it will be open for after school service, tutoring, and weekend activities, so the so they will have somewhere to go and something to do. There will also be a playground for the younger children and basketball court, a place for birthday parties. I will also include something about health because that is important too, very important too. My hope for school, neighborhood, and community is that it will change and grow to be a safer and better place, not just for me, but for everyone. United is strong, strength, and together we can make a difference. to our grand prize winner, I wanted to let you know that the goodie bags have all sorts of cool things in them from the city of Ocoee. Thank you. And the Chick-fil-A gift cards that everybody's getting are $15 gift cards, so that'll get you a good shake and some crunchy munchy things to eat. And all the first place winners got a $50 gift card, but the grand prize winner gets a $250 gift card. And this year, that would be from Renaissance Charter at Crown Point, Kaya Lanning. I have a vision of hope to cure cancer in the future. My blood can possibly cure cancer because I have an autoimmune disorder. That means my immune system is overactive. I hope I can cure cancer one day. A couple years ago, my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer and was on chemotherapy for a long time. After a couple of long years, he was cancer free. After a few wonderful months of being cancer free, he was back in the hospital with cancer again. The poor medical decisions from his health care providers overdosed him with pain medications. He eventually passed away in mid-2016. Later on, around mid-2017, I was in the hospital and was diagnosed with autoimmune disorder. Doctors said that my blood could possibly cure cancer and are still doing research on it. That really inspired my vision of hope to cure cancer. Four years ago, on Super Bowl day, I was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disorder caused by anti-MOG antibodies. There are only 25 people in the whole world like me. My immune system overacts while I'm not fighting a virus. There's an infusion that can help calm it down called IVIG. Since my immune system is so strong, doctors said that my blood could possibly cure cancer. If I could cure cancer, it would be such a blessing. When I'll get older, I'll pursue my vision of hope by donating some of my blood to cancer societies. 
The specialist can possibly use my blood to make to make a solution to cure cancer without me having to constantly give my blood, give some of my blood. That study is called stem cell study. It would, it would be such a miracle for people around the world, even me. Every day I take a moment to pray for people around the world with cancer. It means so much that I might be the cure for this terrible disease one day. I appreciate all the doctors and nurses that took care of me and helped me through my hospital stays. Now someday I'll help them out too. Now, as the grand prize winner, next year, Kaya will be our grand marshal for our Martin Luther King Parade. And she will also read her speech during the Martin Luther King ceremony. All right, at this time, I'd like to call Mayor Rusty Johnson up to say a few words, please. Just, just a quick few words. I want to see who all the principals and the teachers are here tonight. Would they stand up? That's one of the, we, I think in our area, we have some of the best of all the best. And I, I think that's some of the reasons you see what happens with these speeches. Is Miss Bird here? Did you recognize Miss Bird while ago? She's the school board lady's here, so I'm glad she's here where she can hear and see what comes out of our schools and what happens in our area. Uh, the other thing is, just think about these young people as they say these words and do these things and just listen to that and wonder why we sometimes don't get along. That, I think sometimes if we could just listen to the kids a little more and hear some of the words they're saying that we'd all be better off in, a, have, in our world. So I take a lot of pride in knowing that what our city is having and what's going to happen here is great. And we appreciate all the work that you do in the school with these young people and we appreciate all these young people. Please stand the young people that got the awards tonight. You, you need to know that you've done a great thing. Keep doing what you're doing and keep thinking the way you think. The other thing is our diversity board, we're very proud of them. I know our commissioners are, I am. This board puts in countless time and hours working to do the diversity for our city and we really appreciate it. I don't think all of them's here, but we've got the group here that put the word, who did all the judging? We all did. Woo, that was a, that was a toughie. So, and the commissioners, Commissioner Wilson, Commissioner Furster, and Commissioner Branson, I know Commissioner Albert's probably out of town. So, we want to thank them also. But I will also tell you that it looks to me like we're going to have to move to the bigger building. <laughs> so, with this thing keeps getting bigger like it is, I think we're going to have to move to our bigger building in the back. Our, I see you in the back. You'll be directing the traffic over there next year. <laughs> so, it looks like we're going to have to move to the bigger building. We appreciate it. I just want to say thanks again to this uh, Truly a pleasure just to come listen to the children. I have 11 grandchildren. I have them spread out all over. I got a, five of them, I think five of them are at Hope. So I, I, I know what it is and I appreciate these young people and their thought process. It's, it's a, just a terrific pleasure to know what's going on with our youth in our town. And once again, I want to say thanks. I, have, I think I've said everything. Like I said, we super appreciate it. Thanks, where's the parents? The parents stand up. All the parents. That, that is what is behind these youth. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Well, before we leave, I want to thank everyone involved in this whole process. Yes, it's a lot of work to read all those essays, but it's worth it to see the smiling faces, to see how hard our students work. And that just makes all of us proud here at the City of Ocoee. So thank you all for the hard work you did. Thank you to all the students that didn't come in the top three place winners, but also put in really good effort. And that's on the teachers and the administrators here tonight. Thank you for pushing this concert, or concert, <laughs> contest. <laughs> So, because every year we hope to grow it more and more and more. So that's our goal. But thank you again. Yep. Before you leave, we've got a lot of food that's still out front. Leave me a couple of the white chocolate macadamia nut cookies, please. And everybody who won something tonight, please come on up front and we're gonna do pictures. Thank you. Bring your certificates, Bring your certificates too.